here uh mark taylor canfield in seattle hey mark what's up hi tom good to talk to you that was an interesting segment you did with tom styers i got a chance to meet him here in seattle and i gave him a pitch about supporting progressive media because the right seems to understand the influence of media on politics but i sure wish there was more investment in that kind of media and the kind of media that you do in the united states um, that would definitely help me as a journalist, too. So I'm trying to convince him to be an angel investor for us, Tom, but we'll see where he goes with that. But I actually called you about the election of the president of the United States of America. Um, we've seen planes flying over Seattle with Trump banners. They've got Trump supporters at the freeway entrances to I-5 waving the American flags. But I really don't think that Washington State is going to go for Trump, Tom, at least not on the west side of the state. So I'm not sure what the point was in spending that money here. But there is a group called Refuse Fascism, which is calling for daily protests for the next week, just in case the Republicans try to challenge the, electric, uh, the election results. And then people are going to be watching those results outdoors at Green Lake Park today. And then a rally is planned tonight. So that's what's happening in Seattle. The normal election parties, of course, that we would have been to at the hotels and local pubs and things are not happening the 43rd legislative district where I live is having an online uh, election party, but that's about as far as it goes. I don't know what's going to happen if people hit the streets to celebrate like they did when o Obama won the election or to protest the results, because I know that a lot of the police unions around the country are very pro-Trump and are very vocal about that. So I'm hoping that everything is yeah. peaceful and that we have a peaceful transition. That would be the best thing for America for sure. And I'm wondering what you think about uh, the this, this swing states. What, do you, what are you thinking about Florida? Do you think Trump will take it? I don't know. I really don't know, Mark. The, uh, the voter suppression is so well entrenched in those states, the, 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 the states that have been controlled by Republicans for more than a decade. Um, they've got their voter purges down. They've got their, you know, closing polling places and, and messing with polling places and, and uh, you know, minimizing the number of voting machines and things in uh, majority minority districts. Um, you know, the, 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 every trick that the Republicans have, they are going to pull out in this election. And the big question is, after they've used those tricks, they've used voter suppression, they've used lies, they've used uh, deception of people, they've used their right wing media infrastructure echoing those lies. Um, that has gotten them through a number of elections. That got them George W. Bush. You know, that was a little help from the Supreme Court. Um, you know, that, that got them, uh, you know, Reagan and Bush to begin with. But, but, uh, and, and, and certainly that got them Trump. But I really think that, uh, you know, their time has passed. This is going to be, this election today is going to be the big test of whether the Republican strategy of relying on voter suppression, voter intimidation, and voter purges is going to be viable going forward. We'll be right back. You're listening to Tom Hartman.